Good day, Great Tolls. Welcome to the second lesson in week 22. We we'll continue to learn about electrodynamics. In the last lesson, you learned about the fact that there was a magnetic field caused by a current carrying conductor. In this lesson, you're going to learn about the motor effect, which is dependent on this. So again, please watch very carefully this very good video produced by the Mindset Learn team, and then go do the assessment in the turntable system to make sure you actually understand what has been presented here. And if you don't, come back and watch the video again. Have a great day. Hello and welcome to the second lesson in our series on electrodynamics. By now we know how magnetism is formed when current flows through a conductor. We also know a way to predict the direction of the magnetic field around the conductor. And that a solenoid can be turned into a useful and powerful magnet. One thing certainly occurs to me though. How can I put this magnetism to use? The answer is all around us. The motor effect. The motor effect describes the way that a conductor experiences a force or movement when it is in a magnetic field. Simply put, this is one very effective way that electricity can be used to create motion. The motor effect results when two magnetic fields interact. Just like two magnets, sometimes they attract, sometimes they repel. It's all about the direction of their fields. Let's remind ourselves how to draw some magnetic field lines around a conductor. If we have a conductor with current flowing into the page, like this, we can draw a cross. Now, let's draw the magnetic field around it. Try it for yourself. Did you remember to use your right hand? See how the field lines move clockwise around it. Now we are going to do something different. We are going to introduce another magnet field, this time from a horseshoe magnet. And we will place the magnet's north pole on top. Can you see how this might affect the conductor? The two magnetic fields are now going to interact. And the result is a force or thrust acting on the conductor. The field lines to the left are in the opposite directions. This means that the fields will attract. Something else to notice is that the fields on the right will repel as the lines go in the same direction. Like magnetic poles repel. So the result should be a force to the left and the conductor should move. Now we have a hypothesis. So let's try that using some equipment. When I switch this power supply on, current will run away from you. Also, I've placed the North Pole on the top like our diagram. When I switch the power on, the wire moves to your screen. That was great, but there was one problem. It took a long time to predict the direction that the wire would move. There must be an easier way. Well, luckily for us, scientists have found a way to make use of our left hand as well. Let's see how. Get your left hand ready. The thumb and first two fingers of the left hand are held like this. Each one represents one part of the magnetic puzzle. My thumb represents the thrust. The first finger represents the field of the magnet from north to south. Lastly, the second finger shows the direction of current in the conductor. That seems quite easy, but I think we should practice this before we forget. Thumb is thrust. First finger for field, second finger for current. Let's test out Fleming's left hand rule on another conductor. So, in this diagram, will the wire move left or will it experience a force down or up, left or right? Before I tell you the answer. I think I should share a hint with you. Start with your first finger first. That way, your wrist can rotate so that your second finger aligns with the current. If you identified the field as being from north to south, as we see here, 
our first finger will point to the right. Now, let's match our second finger to the direction of current which is towards us. If we see where our thumb goes, you will see that the thrust will be upwards. Now, the left hand rule can be very tricky, so you should practice as often as possible. Practice really does make perfect. Now, we still don't have an actual use for moving just one wire in one direction. All of the electrical appliances that move seem to move in a circular fashion. This is an electrical motor from a toy car. It's very similar to the types of motors that are used in appliances. You may recognize some of these appliances from around the house, like fans, refrigerators, or blenders. I've prepared a very small version of the electric motor here. Using just the power of a battery, we can cause the motor effect to turn the coil of wire but only when I hold this magnet close to the coil. When I remove the magnet, the coil stops turning. Let us look at a diagram of a real direct current motor. When current flows through the wire in the diagram, the coil of wire will begin to rotate. Start with the field. I have chosen the closest side of the coil to work with. Now, Rotate your left hand under your second finger in the same direction as the current, like this. Can you see where the wire in the picture will go? This part of the coil will experience a downwards force. Electric motors have one major problem. When the wire we showed is pushed all the way to the bottom, the motor would stop. Clever inventors found a way to fix this. When the coil of wire called an armature rotates, it is attached to a split ring commutator which changes the direction of the current in the coil. See the position of the brushes and commutator here at what we will call zero degrees. Now watch the other parts. The brushes are the parts that do not move. The commutator rotates between them. Now the armature rotates to the 90 degree position. Notice the position of the brushes and commutator and compare it to the situation at 180 degrees and at 270 degrees. The brushes are the parts that do not move. The commutator rotates between them. Let's go over those parts and their functions. The armature is the coil of wire. The brushes are fixed and made of carbon. The brushes touch the split ring commutator, which switches the direction of the current in the coil. How can we make these motors more powerful to do amazing things like drive cars and electric drilling machines? Well, these motors use a coil of wire with electricity and permanent magnets. So when we change these things, we can make a motor more powerful. More coils of wire, higher current, and stronger magnets are all ways that the motor can be made more powerful and produce more power.